Hey guys, Todd Bettenhausen here and I am stoked to make this video today because it means that I've solved two big problems and I've got my iRacing rig running again and running better than ever. Uh, my last video was a, a bit of pouting about having tearing problems with an R9 290X. I RMA'd it and now I have a 780 tie in here. I had to jump through some hoops to get this thing to work. Um, I talked about it in the iRacing forums. I hacked the 327-23 driver with a little bit of help from, well, <laughs> go read about it. I don't want to put it out on YouTube. Anyhow, iRacing has never looked better. Um, there's no way to sugarcoat this, folks. Back-to-back, uh, -back, an R9 290X and a 780 tire. The anti-aliasing of the NVIDIA hardware, and I optimized both these. I optimized the AMD hardware with Radeon Pro, and I optimized the NVIDIA hardware with NVIDIA Inspector. And the anti-aliasing, the visuals are are very, very far superior on the NVIDIA hardware. There's there's no sugarcoating it. I'm certain of it. These are four foot diagonal, 1024 by 768 screens. The pixels are huge, and I hope you guys can appreciate how how beautiful the anti-aliasing is. Um, it looks magnificent. By far the best I've ever seen iRacing look. And I've got a, a massive uh, vertical field of view here. It's 179 degree horizontal field of view and with these four to three screens you can see how much I can see nearly the entire rearview mirror and all the way down if the steering wheel weren't in the way there you can see that I can see the entire instrument panel of the Gen 6 but here's why I wanted to make this video um, big big shout out to Jacob Klein who wrote an excellent NVIDIA settings optimization guide you can find it in the iRacing forums if you're a member there it's a great resource, very, very well written. Thank you, Jacob. I really appreciate that. One data point to add to it, though. I went through the whole guide. I did all the uh, the things that optimize input lag. I did the two back buffers equals one in renderer.ini. I set pre-rendered frames limited to one in the NVIDIA control panel. This is one of the combined anti-aliasing modes, the highest one that that... Jacob recommends this thing runs adaptive V-Sync 60 frames per second silky smooth across all three screens not a tear in sight but one thing input lag now we know how controversial or how uh, how much discussion there is about input lag in iRacing and how much it can hurt the the fastest people with the V-Sync getting the getting the steering out of whack well and Jacob, I hope you see this video, and thank you if you do for your guide. But one thing I discovered, and there's no doubt in my mind about this, if you if you do those things I mentioned, if you if you cap the frame queue or limit pre-rendered frames at one, you do not want to put cap frame queue on in the simulator. You get less input lag if you uncap the frame queue in the simulator. And of course, you want to run two back buffers equals one. But this is adaptive V-Sync, and I want to show you my input lag. The fastest guys are going to complain that it's still a little bit behind, but watch this. For having silky smooth video across all three screens with no tearing, graphics card running nice and cool, that's a trade-off that I will definitely make. So there you go, guys. Everything's looking great here. Hope this helps somebody out. See you next time.